Hey everyone, Andy Raphael from eTechnics.com and today I want to talk all about our test bench because, well, it's had some upgrades and that's because there's a lot of new graphics cards coming out from Nvidia and now even AMD. Let's do this. So we all know that RTX 3000 series is basically upon us. Sadly, I can't actually show you anything because it would break the NDA, but I want to make it very, very clear. We've got 3080, we've got 3090, and then in October, we will have 3070 as well. And we've been using kind of an old test bench for quite some time now, because when it comes to graphics cards, we have to correlate all of our results. So that's the results from older graphics cards that you've probably even seen on the shelves, 10 series. Obviously now the 20 series is technically old. So we wanted to kind of redo things, rejig things a little bit, and also change up some of the games as well. So we were using Z390, we were using a 9900K. It was at the time the very best processor, motherboard kind of platform combination that really money could buy. And that's for a very good reason. Intel, as we all know, is still very much king when it comes to FPS. I mean, you can look at certain games in between sort of Intel and even the equivalent AMD, there was kind of 20 to 30 frames per second difference. I'm talking Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex, and so forth. But it's not always about just that. Obviously, FPS is kind of the main goal that everyone wants, but there is kind of so much more to it. And that's why we've actually changed things up. So we've gone with AMD, we've gone with X570, and for a very, very good reason. Actually, kind of a multitude of reasons. Really, it's the best selling platform at the moment. The majority of the community are moving over to AMD. So we wanted to kind of replicate what the general consumer is buying themselves in our own system so that it's easier for you guys to compare. Yes, the numbers may be a little bit different to say what some other tech tubers or review websites are actually doing because they're utilizing an Intel platform, but I'm hoping this is actually gonna take off and maybe other people are gonna kind of, you know, take up the same mentality of what I'm thinking. So first and foremost, X570, it does give us PCI Express 4.0. And with that comes a multitude of things. Obviously, we know with the 5700 XT, 5700, and sort of, you know, AMD graphics cards moving forward are PCI Express 4.0. And now NVIDIA have kind of, you know, opened that market as well. And that doesn't just mean that we're getting the extra bandwidth, which, you know, kind of correlates down to what memory is used, GDDR6 and X and so forth. But there's so much more to it. And that's actually in conjunction with Microsoft. So with the new Nvidia graphics cards, we are gonna have the likes of RTX IO, which is basically going to give us a quicker way for the graphics card to talk directly with the storage. And then consequently, that's going to give you quicker um, sort of game loading times. And in theory, that should give you a little bit of a performance boost. And AMD are working on their kind of own way of doing things again, along with Microsoft. So that's kind of one element of it. The other element, as I mentioned, is trying to make our platform as similar to what a general consumer would actually go out and buy. So you will find that we have a huge choice of processors to go for. We actually settled on the 3900 XT. While we could have gone for the 3950X, I do feel that it's kind of beyond reach of the majority of consumers out there, purely because of the price point, first and foremost. I mean, let's not compare it against Intel because obviously Intel is a lot more expensive, but again, trying to mimic what the general consumer is gonna go out and buy. So 3900 XT, you know, we have a decent amount of cores, threads, and a pretty decent clock speed. Yes, we could have gone up to the 3950X, but we would have actually lost some of the base speed. I believe it goes from 3.8 gigahertz down to 3.5. So do we really want that? And yes, there is a plane going on just outside the window. So what else did we change up? Well, obviously with a new processor like the 3900 XT, which even looking at that, it is the latest processor from AMD at the moment, at least until fourth gen hits, we've already been told about specific dates for that. But with the motherboard, we decided to go for the Crosshair 8 Hero Wi-Fi. It gives us all the functionality that we need. Again, is within kind of arm's reach of the majority of consumers. We could have gone with a formula or maybe even something a little bit more extreme from another brand like the Aorus Extreme. Godlike, stupidly priced boards, but it's just taking it away from what the average consumer would go out and buy. So we went with that. It has got Wi-Fi as well, which allows us to connect in and just have that extra functionality behind us as well. Now, when it comes to the storage, this is something why we changed it because of the whole RTX IO thing, uh, PCI Express Gen 4, and being able to kind of utilize the communication between the graphics card and the NVMe storage. We went with Seagate, and we went with the Seagate Firecuda 520 two terabyte drive for a very, very good reason. 
Now, when you think about sort of the size of games, and I'm going to really put it down to two games out there, Microsoft Flight Sim and Call of Duty Warzone or Modern Warfare, whatever element. Either way, they're both huge in size. I mean, the latest updates, I think, now is putting Call of Duty to 211 gigabytes in size. It's just ridiculous. So we went with two terabyte, and I've pretty much filled it up with the whole host of games that we're running. We're running Shadow of the Tomb Raider, Deus Ex. Um, we actually ditched Call of Duty, so I don't even know why I'm mentioning that. It's just not a very good game when it comes to ray tracing, which was one of the key important things that we wanted to test against. Other games that we're looking at, Gears 5 or Gears of War, whatever you want to call that. Um, Young Blood, uh, Wolfenstein. I'm trying to think of all the names, but there are so many different games and we have to test them under so many different circumstances, whether that be without ray tracing, with ray tracing, with DLSS, with ray tracing and DLSS. And you have to remember there that not every single game at every single resolution will allow you to play with ray tracing and DLSS or just with ray tracing or just with DL, it's a complete minefield. And I'm hoping that this video is probably complicating things even more, but I'm hoping it's actually gonna simplify it when you see the results, when all of our content drops for RTX 3080, 3090, 3070, and then so forth onto the AMD 6000 series when that drops. When it comes to memory, we could have gone with 32 gig, but instead we went with 16 gig of Team Group Dark ZA 3600 megahertz. Again, trying to make it as likely sort of minded system as what a, what an average consumer would actually go out and buy. So we've got that. Uh, power supply wise, we could have chose anything. We went with a Fantex Revolt Pro 850. It's an 80 plus gold power supply. It does exactly what it's meant to do. We don't really use that power supply for any other builds. We don't work huge amounts with Fantex. So it was kind of surplus to requirements. So it made sense to stick it in here. And you will see the mass amounts of PCI Express cables here, purely because some of the cards that are coming out have three eight pins very similar to what we saw on the 20 series with Hall of Fame from uh, from Galaxy and, and so forth. Above and beyond that, you can see the biggest thing taking up the whole system is the Noctua D15S. It's the best air cooler on the market. There's no denying it. We decided to go with that. I might even change it up for a black one at a later date just because it kind of looks a bit ugly and a bit out of place. But, you know, that's my kind of personal preference with it. And uh, it's all sitting on the open bench table. And that's pretty much the whole system. So I wanted to sort of talk through it because otherwise I have to mention this in every single video of every single graphics card, every single time we do a review that this is our test bench. Now I can just link back to this. You guys can refer to it. You can see the reasonings as to kind of why we went ahead with this and go from there. So yeah, hopefully uh, you enjoyed this video. If you did, you know exactly what to do. Hopefully it's answered some sort of questions, but if not, drop them in the uh, comment section below and I'll be sure to kind of try and check it out uh, before the 3080 review actually drops. And yeah, enjoy the content. Cheers, guys. See you in the next one.